Hi guys, today we are going to learn a new subject that we call it integration methods. In fact, it's not so new, but you must know this, these methods because these methods, they help us to solve integrations or to find antiderivatives of some functions that we cannot find them by the old methods, yani, uh, means by section one and two. Integration methods, in fact, they are so much, but in our book, they are classified into two types. Integration by parts, integration by substitution. What is integration by parts and when do we use it? When do we use it? First, integration by parts, they are classified into two types. Natural logarithmic method and tabular method. Okay, what are these? And when do we use them? Later, I will explain them one by one. But first, look and focus. When do you use these methods? For example, if you are faced to solve such a question, integrals of x times ln x dx. Look, what do I see? Natural logarithmic. Integrals x squared ln 3x dx. Again, natural logarithmic. Definite integral from 1 to e ln x dx. When you see such such question or these types of questions, don't forget, you cannot solve it by the old method. You need a new method that we call the natural logarithmic method. Okay, keep this one in your mind. Come here. Second, tabular method. Tabular method, it's obvious from its name that it depends on table. Which table? Follow me, later you know. If you see such a question, integrals x times e to the power x dx. Actually, we learned to say that when we see e, the answer is equal to itself. But here, no. Why? Because the function that was multiplied by natural exponential function, it must be equal to the derivative of its power. But derivative of power is 1. This is x. So, it means that I cannot solve this one by direct method. Go on. Now, look here. Integrals x sine x dx. Usually, we use it to say that antiderivative of sine is negative cosine when the derivative of angle exists here. But it's not because derivative of x is 1. This is x. Now, integrals x cosine x dx. Look here again, same thing. Antiderivative of cosine is sine. So, derivative of angle must be here. It is not. So, these two types, we call them integration by parts. Let us come to integration by substitution. For all the students who they remember the uh, rule number 12 in chapter 3, section 2, rules of derivative, it was general power rule. Here, this one is the antiderivative of general power rule in two cases. First case, we called it antiderivative of general power rule if you see a bracket there is a power. You want to find antiderivative of this one. Okay, don't confuse. Just check one thing. Is the function that's multiplied to bracket equal to the derivative of inside? Yes. If yes, it's okay. Directly you can solve it. Later I show it to you. Second, integral sine squared x cosine x dx. Look carefully. The power on the sine, you can move it on the bracket. So what does it mean? It means it's a general power rule. So derivative of sine, isn't it cosine? Yes. So directly you can find the antiderivative. Second, UDU method or the special method. When do we use this one? When we have a general power because this one means x minus 1 to the power 1 over 2. This is general. Don't forget. We use it to say that when we have derivative of inside the square root, we use it to say that 2 over 3 times f of x times square root of f of x plus c. But here there is a problem. Derivative of x minus 1 is not x, it's 1. So you must use it by UDU method. Again, wait later, you learn. Now, we use it to say that if we see any fraction, we take the derivative of denominator. If it was equal to the numerator, we say that it is the lin absolute value of denominator. But here, derivative of the x minus 1 is 1. But this is x, so it's not equal to, so you must use UDU method. Thank you for the fairest part.